Oh, hey, Johnny Vanderford here, Lorraine County Community College, Men's and Microelectronics Manufacturing Program, as well as Merit Manufacturing Electronics and Rework Institute for training. I was actually just getting set up to do kind of a test run of a couple of parts, in particular, a couple of uh, new feeders that we've got that we've just uh, put on the line. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about tapered reel and some of the tools that an SMT operator may or may not find useful to have on their person, from my own perspective at least. Um, so getting up close and personal with this here, one of, the, one of the feeders that I've got to load up here is going to be with this one microfarad uh, capacitor that is in an 0805 package. 0805 meaning that it's 0.8 inches by 0 0.5, uh, excuse me, 0.8. 0.08 inches by 0.05 inches. Sorry about that. This is not a not a large component right now. If you actually if you take a close look at it, there it's actually pretty small in terms of how that looks. Um, so this is tapered reel, and tapered reel typically has two. In addition to the parts that are loaded onto it, two things that are of concern. You have the uh, carrier tape is on the bottom part here that actually holds the part into place. And then you have uh, what I've heard either as a cover tape or a leader tape, uh, depending on uh, but cover tape is usually the one I hear the most. This is a little piece of plastic that stays on top of the carrier tape that helps to hold the uh, uh, parts into place. Um, the carrier tape itself can be made of one of two materials. I've got a plastic embossed, uh, what's referred to as embossed carrier tape, but a lot of components also come with like a paper type of carrier tape with the only primary difference besides the materials is how deep the part is in that pocket. On paper tape, it's almost right at the surface and the cover tape just sort of covers over the top of the part. Whereas on embossed tape, it's actually down inside of the tape and the uh, um, cover tape just sort of covers on top of the carrier tape and almost doesn't even touch the part uh, to a certain extent. I've seen a lot of like chip resistors and smaller chip capacitors come in on paper larger size parts um, or like some capacitors, other parts come in on this particular type of tape. Now, no matter what, no matter what kind of tape that you have, one of the most useful tools that you're going to find as an SMT operator is actually going to be a, pair, a good pair of scissors or snips of some kind, tin snips with it on there, anything that's able to cut material. Um, I wouldn't recommend always going to the store to get a, you know, your, your basic pair of, uh, uh you know convenience store scissors or something like that this isn't really something this is something you actually want to spend a little bit of some money on to get something that's uh sharp and something that's able to cut uh things that could potentially be as thick as say 16 millimeter wide embossed plastic uh now if you notice right here i'm about to load up this feeder uh with this carrier tape is that i've got or with this tape and reel is i've got a small piece of uh cover tape that's covering about oh i would say like maybe four to five inches worth of carrier tape this is really how you want to um keep the tape and reel in terms of if you're going to store it or anything like that you want to kind of keep it in that particular way to where you've easily got a foot i know i don't have a foot but that you want a foot of excess uh cover tape whereas you only want about maybe like four or five inches or so worth of the actual carrier tape itself and the reason being is that when you load up one of these feeders like what i've got right here the tape and reel has to go all the way up to this part of it right here i've actually got to take my tape and reel and feed it which side's it going on mine's going on the left hand side from my perspective here so i'm going to hold the cover tape over the carrier tape and just sort of feed it up here and i know not every feeder is the going to be the same i've seen some different ones these are the electromechanical panasonic feeders that we use on our npm uh w2 uh that's where we got now as it stands right now my my carrier tape and cover tape have gone all the way from the back part of this part here and then all the way up to the top part right over here you can see me kind of i'm able to 
hold on to it over here. But I've actually got further to go. I've actually got to go underneath this little um, uh, copper copper hinge that's in the front. And so you, you get your second tool that you always want to make sure that you have a good one of is a good pair of tweezers. Something that is uh, not the thin pointed kinds for picking up little tiny parts. I prefer the kind that's actually got some serrate. I don't know if you can see that on there, but they have serrated edges at the tips. It enables me to grab onto things a little bit easier from time to time and allows me to set up the machines a little bit faster with it. The kind that I use in particular are uh, Excelta 00D-SA-SEs. I also like the 00SA regular tweezers as well, even though they're not serrated or anything like that. They're still uh, good tweezers to be able to use. So now what I have to do is, well, I got this whole mess up of, of cover tape uh, that's sitting on there. So I'm actually going to snip that part of it off and kind of feed the, uh, the back end part of it uh, right over here. I'm kind of trying to do this so that you have a little bit of a view of what this looks like. There we go. And then making sure that my cover tape is covering on the sprocket holes that are up on this part of the tape and reel here. Now I actually need additional amounts of, of cover tape to be able to go from back here all the way back to where this part is here, where it's going to, these motors and gears are going to pull this whole thing back, given the pulley system that's over here, which I need to get some power to. This brings me to the next tool that we're actually going to use on here. And that is leader tape extension. Uh, one of these guys right here, uh, which I'm just going to pull one of them out, is about an extra foot to a foot and a half worth of cover tape extension that uh, comes over here. We actually buy ours. Where do we buy ours from? We buy ours from Sierra Electronics, which I think is a common company. I've even bought this actually on DigiKey from, from their old hassle. So I peel back the uh, little sticker and I try to get a large portion of the tape covered by the adhesive part of the extension. And now I've got it to where it can go all the way back. I can get it to where it will get pushed into the back part of it here. And then by the time that I wrap this all on here, just like this, I'm gonna pull it nice and taut. And now I'm ready to kind of rock and roll. I would normally have to use a pair of scissors or something to kind of get into the back part of this right here if I wasn't able to get into it right there. In this case right here, I could potentially lift my hood up push my head back, kind of lift this part of it up a uh, little bit further. Now I've got a little bit of some extra room to be able to get in here, but I still have to snip, uh, give the uh, old shave and a haircut two bits from that side of it right there to get anything excess that might actually be still um, uh, on there because uh, I want it to feed back into the cutting part of the machine so that... Um, so that the uh, machine will cut the excess uh, carrier tape. Let me put my power back there. Push that guy in. All right, and that's ready to rock and roll. Now, one last piece of material that we like to use is actually what we call bandoliering tape. This is actually sold by the same company that sells us the cover tape extension, Sierra Electronics. Um, I'm a huge fan of this stuff. Uh, number one, it's pretty strong. Uh, number two, I can cut it with my hands. Uh, number three, it's, uh, it's affordable. And this stuff is used for, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you have uh, some extra uh, uh, parts that need to be uh, put away or stored for the next run. So you wind it up, and you don't want to just put it back in just with a little bit still kind of hanging off, because it will come loose and cause all kinds of... Uh, of a mess in storage and nobody really wants that. So one of the things that you want to make sure that you do as often as possible, if you can, all right, you can't always do that, is make sure that you leave an extra foot or so of that cover tape left over, just so of making it loading it's a little bit easier to be able to do. But if you have excess of this, 
All right. Take the extra tape and reel that you've got and stick it right there on the tape and reel and then use a little bit. I've got a lot. It's a lot of bander layering tape, but you get the uh, you get the gist with that there. Use a lot of bander layering tape to sort of tape that down onto the uh, onto the tape and reel surface so that that can be stored and put back into uh, storage so that it can be used uh, at another time. All right, so a couple of useful tools. Uh, another tool actually that I use from, from time to time, other than just little tools that I like to have handy on me personally. I like to carry a Sharpie. It's just easy to mark things when I need to. Um, I like to carry a uh, machinist ruler. Mine's approximately uh, 15 centimeters long or six inches long in both inches and centimeters and has a decimal equivalent onto the other side of it. I found that most useful. And then from time to time, I like to use a uh, screwdriver that I have, but this screwdriver in particular is kind of nice because it's got a little magnet that's up at the top of it. I can switch out the bits and put in my Phillips or flathead on there, but the magnet's actually been kind of uh, um, useful at being able to you know, pick up small parts because they get nickel plated um, at some point. Uh, in their life. So for instance, I can, if I need to just reach in and grab a, uh, you know, for instance, an electrolytic capacitor like this, or even just kind of reach down and in, and oh, there's this, this stupid chip resistor that's just sitting there. This allows me to grab that chip resistor um, easily and effectively with that, with, uh, with these. Not always recommended for all of the chips on there, but sometimes if you don't have a vacuum handy, like we have a vacuum that we can use to like, you know, pick up some of the parts, just like a little, like a little shop vac, ah, that can be used to kind of help pick up some other stuff along the way. Magnets and electronics don't always mix together. Ask your supervisor on that one. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, more to come from uh, Lorain County Community College's MEMS and Microelectronics Manufacturing Program, as well as Merit Manufacturing Electronics and Rework Institute for Training. Leave a comment in the comment below if you think this was interesting. What would you like to see? Something related over to printed circuit board or microelectronics manufacturing. And we'll see you around on the next one, folks. See you later. Bye-bye.